morning everyone. I hope you're all well. It is Saturday. One day to go until the World Cup. Um, I am going to post a little preview tomorrow on the day itself. Just looking forward to the tournament, just giving a brief introduction and rundown of some of the teams. And I thought, why not release it on the day that the tournament kicks off itself? So tomorrow, don't forget, check back here on the channel or wherever you get your podcasts from for our World Cup preview. I have received a huge amount of support from YouTube and in other platforms where people are consuming the podcast from and in the real world on the videos that I've posted about the Cristiano Ronaldo interview. I really appreciate all that feedback. Um, I'm glad that you've really enjoyed the videos um, and pretty unanimously people seem to be agreeing with the points that I put across. So I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I don't want to keep harpering on about the Cristiano Ronaldo interview. Um, it is pretty much the, the hot topic right now. Um, but I wanted to sort of touch on what the aftermath might be, what the knock-on effects of this interview might be. I think we could be facing a threat here of this becoming the new Bosman ruling, for want of a better term. For anyone who doesn't know what the Bosman ruling was, there was a, a Belgian player called Jean-Marc Bosman in the 1990s. Not the world's greatest player. I think he was playing either in the French first division or second division, and he his contract came to an end. He wanted to leave the club that he was at, and he wanted to move to another club. His contract was over, and he argued he should have the right to leave the club he was at to the club that he wanted to go to. Now, the club he was at had a valuation. The club he wanted to go to were not prepared to meet that valuation, and so they decided not to do business. He felt that was unfair. Now, this was around 1990, 1991. At that point in time, Europe and European football was completely different from what it is now. The history of Europe politically and economically, you could trace it back to the mid-1950s. There had been various agreements that allowed for free passage of goods and materials and services. And we had, we eventually got to what we now know as the European Union. There's meant to be no barriers and nothing to prevent the passing of goods and materials and services across European Union borders. The fact at that time that a contract of a finite amount for a finite period of time could come to an end and the asset, which is the player, could still be held accountable under that contract and could still be held um, by the club that the contract had now expired with, he argued was a breach of all of those European laws. The clubs obviously at that time disagreed. In the UK, we had a tribunal. So if you had a five year contract and that contract came to an end, if you wanted to leave, an independent tribunal would assess the situation, agree an amount of money as like a compensation fee, and then you'd be able to transfer clubs. It could get messy, it was quite inconsistent, um, certainly nothing like we, we saw today. Obviously this was a dirty legal battle and it eventually got to the European Courts of Justice and they ruled in Bosman's favour. So we have what's called the Bosman ruling and that stated that if a contract came to an end they, and it wasn't renewed, a player was free to leave the club that he was at and the contract's now expired from and go to the club that he wishes to go to for free. No transfer fee, nothing. As an extra little caveat, if you've got less than six months of your current contract uh, remaining, you're free to sign a pre-contract agreement, which I think has been annotated and amended now that I'm not sure if you can do that within the same country that you're playing in, but certainly if you're in Scotland and you want to come to England, you can sign a pre-contract agreement. And if you're playing in England and you want to go to any other European country, you can sign a pre-contract agreement when you get to the last six months of your current contract. That's as we see it now. And we saw a load of high profile moves off the back of it. Edgar Davids left the Champions League winners Ajax, went to AC Milan for free. Steve McManaman left Liverpool, went to Real Madrid, 1999, left for free. We saw uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic come to Manchester United. He came for free. And I think you could say that half of Harry Redknapp's entire career as the original Wheeler Dealer was based on his opinion to find a bargain, bringing a load of players either on loan or on free. Um, so it's worked in the benefit of both players and managers. 
clubs have been able to build squads for signing players on a free and players have been able to move fairly uninhibited. You're probably asking yourselves, what's a European ruling about football transfers got to do with Cristiano Ronaldo's sensational tell-all interview with Piers Morgan? Go check out the previous episodes where I give a little bit more reaction to the, to the interview and you'll probably see some of the points that I raised in that. It's to do with the ramifications and the knock-on effects of what this is. If we look at footballers now, and I use David Beckham as a case in point, the line that they walked, and Cristiano Ronaldo is doing that now, has seen footballers become huge celebrities, global superstars. They are a marketer's dream. You don't need to be an elite footballer anymore to be huge, to be a marketable asset and to have huge commercial viability. You can have players like Jesse Lingard, players like Deli Ali, who you could argue have not fulfilled their potential and are not considered elite players. They probably had a lot of potential and they could have maybe been knocking on the door, but that's never gonna happen for them now. Yet, they have appeared in adverts, they've got merchandising deals, they've got all their social media stuff. They've got a lot of uh, distractions and focus away from their footballing career. People like Roy Keane are not fans of that. And so Alex Ferguson used to say back in the day about David Beckham that he needs to focus on his football. Now, because of the fact that footballers are huge commercial, marketable assets, they represent a big investment and a potential huge return for a football club, not just for what they might deliver on the football pitch. Ronaldo's interview was constructed, it was premeditated, and it was a mechanism for him to look at the situation and go, I'm not happy with this. I want to go from here and I want to go to here. The club obviously are not going to release him ordinarily without a transfer fee. And they expect him to honour his contract, which is to give 110%, to do what the manager says and to try and score goals. Now, Ronaldo didn't want to do that, didn't like the way the situation was going and wanted to orchestrate a way to move. So the way to do that is to effectively breach a contract, bring the club into disrepute and effectively get sacked, get the contract terminated, become a free agent, going back to the Bosman and suddenly he's free if there are takers to take his pick from the offers that are on the table. Now, the concern here is other footballers might look at this and see this as a potential way out. Ronaldo has a certain amount of income that if he loses six months, seven months payment on his contract, he's not gonna lose any sleep over that. He wants out, he wants to become a free agent, he wants that contract to be ripped up so that he can go and continue his journey elsewhere. You could see something like a, a Neymar or an Mbappe situation where we've seen Mbappe recently sign a contract extension with PSG. He's now saying he's not happy about that and he wants to move. Real Madrid are lurking in the background. You could easily see, like a La, a La Decision interview that he gave, where he might do another one, tear the club a new one, bring the club into disrepute, PSG do something similar to Cristiano Ronaldo. Suddenly Kylian Mbappe is a free agent. You don't have to spend 100, 150, 200 million on this guy. What? He's completely fair game. This could start a snowball effect where if you've got a player on a high profile, expensive contract, they might look at this as a mechanism. Maybe they'll do some form of social media post or something of that nature where they will look to orchestrate a mechanism to breach the contract sufficiently that the club can legally tear up that contract without having to pay them any kind of renumeratory um, severance pay. And you have a parting of the ways. This almost becomes like Bosman take two, where if you've got years to run on a contract or you feel that you have been misled or agreements have been renegated on, you're not happy with the situation, you do something like this. You do something so severe that the club is left with little choice but to rip up your contract. And suddenly you've got the pick of the crop to, mo from, to move to. I can see this being a major issue. You've got players who were signed, especially if you look at the Chelsea situation where half that squad was assembled in the summer based on Thomas Tuchel being manager. A few weeks after the transfer window shuts, Graham Potter comes in. Perhaps some of the players aren't happy and aren't satisfied with the way that Graham Potter's methods are. Maybe they want to get out of the football club. You could potentially see some tell-all revelatory interviews coming out of Chelsea. And we might see some more free agents soon to come onto the market. Now, I'm not saying for one second that there's going to be an avalanche of players doing this. But I do think that unless something 
is put in place, we need to prevent this from being a new case in point uh, of a new means of a Bosman, a player looking to detach themselves from a football club so that they can orchestrate a move. And I do think this does present a material threat. It's the modern way of players with all the power, all the followers, looking to orchestrate a situation for their benefit. And I am I am a little bit worried that we could just see this market start to collapse. You could literally sign a multi-year, super high value contract. The moment things are not pandered to how you want, you do something like this or whatever the next iteration will be, you create a mechanism and you get out of that contract and you're transferring from club to club willy-nilly. I think that's a dangerous precedent. And I just thought it'd be worth covering that point and getting it out there just to preempt what might come. Anyway, as I say, stay tuned. The World Cup preview episode is going to be dropping very, very, very soon. Doesn't matter what you think about the Qatar World Cup. We have a World Cup imminently about to start. Let's just focus on the football for a second. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be an amazing tournament. In the meantime, I will catch you soon.